Ooh, what is up guys, I'm Borzu. Welcome back to our Scandinavian Stuntland Battle in the VPL vs. Bogat Week 4 this time around. We actually don't have a Week 3 battle, it's mainly because I was facing off against a guy named Quill and did the Dungeon type lotion. Uh, and sadly, I should say that we had a couple of DCs. I did eventually lose that game, even though we never got to actually go to the finish up on that game. But trust me, I would not have been able to win that match, and I actually lost by definition 1 0, which was okay. I felt that was really worth it. I had a run in this set, and so did Quill, and I definitely would have appreciated uploading that game, but that did not come to fruition, sadly. Though, with that said, we're going up against Bogat this time around. As you guys can see on the screen, we have Cradily, Vanillox, Swampert, Mianxiao, Alolan Sandslash, and the Latios. This time I should be able to say that right a couple of times, I'm sure. But yeah, he doesn't bring two things that definitely was prepping for, which was Heatron and Mega Pinsir. Mega Pinsir is most certainly one of those Pokemon that deal with me really well. Uh, definitely sweeps me if I'm unlucky. Uh, so glad not seeing that. They also have Superior, which is something I was prepping for, which he didn't bring. He brought, take, took a more defensive route, and um, I was glad to see it, because I felt that I was probably more able to deal with his team, but at the same time, I'm still not in the best kind of check here anyway, because he is a heavy, heavy, heavy ice. Alolan Sandslash is a very, very ferocious Pokemon, so I'm glad I'm bringing this time around um, Scarf Cobalion, which is able to outspeed an adamant... Uh, Alolan and Sandslash in this hail, which is really something I was needing. Other than that, we have Cryomail, which deals with his team really well. I mean, a free strike is one of those team, one of those moves that just does well. It has hit upon ground, mainly for the heater that didn't make the game, and of course, protect and recover. Uh, did optimize for actually having a rapid spin, but decided against it mainly because I didn't feel my team was that weak to rocks outside of, of course, the um, Cryomail itself. And other than that, we have a defensive right here with a bit of a speed investment, mainly to have speed a relaxed. Um, Swampert with no investment. Oh, I felt that that was something that I really needed for this battle in case I decided to go with Swampert. Uh, Gliscor here. Uh, Gliscor is um, a defensive variant, very, very special defensive with, of course, Earthquake and Facade. Uh, able to take hits from, of course, the likes of the Pinsir and also able to retaliate. One stop twice with Stone Edge. I didn't like that, but have been able to miss, and I don't want to optimize for Smackdown. That will not kill. Cabellion has stated Scarf variant did optimize for actually having a uh, Swoz stand set, but his team is kind of speedy and Latios can definitely take me on. A Lolan Muck, a Soul's Best version, mainly here to, of course, shake the Latios. Uh, Latios, damn it! <laughs> uh, nothing to it. Uh, Pursuit, Knockoff, Flamethrower, and the Gunk Shot. Uh, Flamethrower is there for uh, a Lolan Sand Slash. That's about it, really. I am able to outspeed a Lolan Sand Slash if it's not speedy. Uh, I find the hard not likely, but it, I am able to have speed if that's the case. And of course, Tapu Koku, uh, X Propelled variant, nothing really big to it. Uh, U turn, um, Thunderbolt, Dazzling Gleam, and I do believe Grass Knot. So that's about it. It does do super effective damage or neutral at least against most of the team. So, anyway, with all this in mind, let's go, of course, into the game. So, from the get go, he's going to lead off with Credili. I actually lead off with my Kyogre Mill. The main reason here was I truly really believe that the free strike does really well against all of his team here anyway, and I shouldn't be able to. Um, I should be able to do massive damage against the whole team. Now he's switching his Emir, which is a Vanillux, and trust me, it's a bit of an issue actually because I don't necessarily do that much to it. Free strike does roughly 25%, which is kind of nice. But then again, this Pokemon can learn Flash Cannon. I don't like trying to take a Flash Cannon at all, actually. So he's gonna switch it out by going back to Cradili, probably thinking that Flash Cannon would scare me off. Uh, it doesn't, uh, mainly because I think I can take it. Um, I can definitely recover against it, and um, I can just basically recover up really well. So Cradili get a heavy amount of damage towards it, actually 50% and a bit over, and the hail definitely is secure. I can KO next time. As he actually switches in Cold Cuts this time around, and this is an issue. Uh, it comes in freely. It doesn't. It does take a lot of damage from the freeze drive since, of course, it's four times resisted. But I cannot take an Iron Head, so I need to switch out to Gobelion. I was really hoping it went for a Sword Stance, uh, because if it went for a Sword Stance, I am able to have speed. But it goes for an Iron Head. The Iron Head does kind of secure. This is an Adamant set, which is good. Because that means that at least we are able to speed it if it goes for Sword Stance later on in the game. But I am forced to go to close combat. I cannot take an earthquake from this thing. Uh, actually, switching to, of course, it's Swampert. And it does a fair amount of damage. It does along 30%. But with leftovers that more closer to 25. 
and if I go for another close combat, the Earthquake will most certainly kill. And while Stealth Frogs is a secure play, I am not one to risk it. So I'm gonna bring actually the Magalicious Spin, you know, of course, the Crowd Mail. Mainly because if I get, of course, the, if you get this Rock Sub, that's okay. Uh, in a way that at least by then I don't get residual damage at first hand against that. Now, Rapid Spin seems super obvious, and he's actually going for Protect here. Trying to scout, I guess I believe, the Rapid Spin or Freeze Dry. I go directly for Freeze Dry. Uh, I was really hoping. Sorry. I was really hoping he was trying to go for another layer of Stealth Rocks, but he doesn't do that. He doesn't actually trying to make that call, which is great on his side. Having Protect is definitely a good way to check him whether or not I could hurt him super effectively. As Snow Warning is back on at it. Now, here's the thing. I am now whittled down so much that Flash Cannon is very likely to uh, pretty much take me out if it is a crit. So I decide to go for a course of recover. He shows me here that he actually is Scarfed. And that's both good and bad. It's good because I know I can survive the hit. It's bad because it does mean I outspeed my whole team. And yes, Blizzard spamming could very well effectively neutralize me. So with that in mind, I decide to go for hit power ground here, hoping that he would think that I would recover. So here comes a little sand slash, and we do not kill it. And I was like, no. He does die to the next lift or life for projectiles. So I decided that I go for protect here, mainly to see if it goes for effective me. I really want to whittle down or take away turns from, of course, the hail. As it goes for swallow sense, I'm like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. So I'm gonna send in my Rhyperia right here. I know that the hail ends next turn as. Um, he goes for an Iron Head, and due to me being defensively that I am, I am able to take this hit. So I don't take it that well. I, I really don't take it that well. But due to the leftovers and the hail stopping, I am now able to survive. Which is super unfortunate, because the Lola Sand Slash was so intimidating. So here comes Swamp Bird. I was really believing that he would have bring actually his... Um, his Miani shall go for U-turn. He didn't do that. He went for Swamp Bird, trying to go for Secure Kill. As I was really hoping that it was relaxed, which he was, and I was able to set up rocks before I fall. So Rhyperia right, did definitely do his job. Now to consider, of course, that Mega Pizza was not on his job today. So we got our rocks. They're here to stay, and uh, I can easily go to Glacius. And uh, I do believe I go directly for recover because if Skull is his only offensive move to get with Earthquake, Skull will not do anything to me because 135 special defense naturally is pretty much nope. In, um, in this kind of environment. So with that said, he's gonna bring Emer and I go for a safe recover. Now here's the thing, uh, I need more HP than I have here. I definitely need to be roughly at 140 to be able to uh, survive Stealth Rock after Life Orb damage. So with that in mind, I decide to go for another recover. Now he could very well I get that... Uh... Oh, sorry. I get reduction in um, special defense. It doesn't do that, luckily for me. And I feel that you know I am an area where I actually can go for a freeze try, and uh, I am. Um, I definitely don't take too much from the flash cannon, and I do get a crit here, which may or may not matter because it is a roll actually. And I feel that I'm I could have got a max roll definitely, but that's that's just a risk. That's it's not a very high chance. As here comes to Mian Xiao. If he goes for high jump kick, uh, my protect protect play here really makes sense. But um, he will go for a U-turn, and the good thing about that is that now that he goes for a U-turn, it means I can bring in my uh, my Glisco and basically get my, of course, Toxic Orb activated. So I'm gonna send him back, just gonna get, of course, the Stealth Rocks damage, which is great. And the U-turn will do pretty much nothing. I am uninvested in defense, but Gliscor is just that naturally defensive, and of course, with uh, being a hit that is not super effective, it clearly helps. So anyway, here comes Cradily, and he's definitely in range where Earthquake can kill him. Uh, a bit unfortunate that the hail stops there, because the extra damage would have helped me secure this KO. Uh, Earthquake is, luckily for me, now able to KO though, but as stated, it was not a 100% thing that that would transpire. But Cradily is out, Gliscor does get the kill. Gliscor gets a kill, is awesome. Gliscor is awesome, just in general, I really like this Pokemon a lot. As of course, Kuang comes, which is of course the Latios, and... Um, I need to switch in my muck. Um, I was feeling that he wouldn't go for Draco due to me having, of course, Tabu Koku, but he does. He does go for Draco, which is unfortunate here that he does miss. It does kind of matter because that means I can actually just play the Pursuit game 
Draco will push me over 50% tier and it's because of the Stealth Rock. I was supposed to take, of course, Drake with ease, though that was not with Stealth Rock in mind, which with Stealth Rock is a 50% hit. But the thing is here, uh, even though he has a maximizing damage output, there is no way he's gonna get out of this situation. Draco next turn will not kill me, and Pursuit will most certainly kill him. So that was a fair amount of exchanges here. I definitely appreciated that situation kind of a lot. Uh, having a Lowland Muck, which is a Pokemon I've been hating on so much, uh, is a Pokemon that definitely solved probably the tougher issues. Uh, definitely stuff, situations like this, definitely killing Psychic types without the bigger issues. So Swampert comes in. I was feeling Earthquake's gonna come. Skull is not a KO after all. I can eat safely switch into my Gliscoll. And I was hoping here I could kind of stall him out, but surprise, surprise, he goes for a Skull. And not only that, but the Skull is pretty much doing over 50% and I I do not I do not approve of this I was definitely not expecting this as I am specially defensive actually so with that in mind I actually gonna go for a rooster because I'm faster and to try to get as much HP as possible because I need to be in a good amount of help to survive a high jump kick from the Mian Xiao. so overall this is probably a really stupid play of me because yeah I am now down for the count, basically, and um, I can take a high jump kick if it's Scarf, but if it's a bandit version, it's over. Uh, that was definitely stupid, stupid, stupid play for me, as I'm now over 50% at least, I'm gonna actually decide to go back to, of course, my Muck, which, surprisingly, even after Stealth Rocks, will be able to take this Skull, so that's... I wonder, I wonder how fat is the Asherl, or Ashel, I wonder. By the way... Um, RSL, or um, it means pretty much bum, or ass in Swedish, kind of felt speeding. So anyway, I'll just go for a safe knockoff and fall to Earthquake. There was no way Muck was going to do anything to Swampert, it does outspeed it, that's about it, but I don't have any way of actually damaging it a lot, really, oh, it's, it's pretty bad. So anyway, I'm going to bring my Rain Bronze here, for, you know, of course, my Tapu Koku. Tapu Koku could very well wrap up this game, depending on his place here. The Grass Knot is a guaranteed KO on the Swampert, uh, since we've seen the leftovers and it's not getting any more recovery, uh, which is nice. Uh, so he goes for Protected, probably scouting for just that, as I was debating whether or not I should go for Thunderbolt or Grass Knot here. I decided to go for Grass Knot, I'm feeling overall the safer play, he'd just stay in, and the Swampert falls. So had he switched in Mian Xiao here, things might have turned pretty darn sour, but at the point we are now, I'm actually able to wrap up this game. If he goes for Poison Jab, he will be locked to that, which means that Cobalion could come in and just go for the close combat if it's a Scarf variant. But the optimized high jump kick, which of course, as stated, means that he is Scarf clears it goes goes before Tabu Koku, and I am able to wrap up with the Thunderbolts. So we win this game 4-0, and it's a very, very important 4-0, because it means that also with, of course, the team season over, because every week we're actually facing up uh, just four players from a different team, and then we change team. It means that I went 3-1 against the White House, which is uh, important. I uh, really needed to not break even, I really needed these wins. So I'm being very, very glad that I was able to pull that off. Now, of course, with that said, Boga did mention here that due to the stress of actually waiting for another player to battle him, that he may or may not actually brought the right sets. Mainly, the Vanillax was not... Uh, the Specs version, which he was looking forward to using, had it been Specs, this game would have turned differently because that would have meant that my Cryogono would not have been able to shake him as wisely as it was here. Uh, and I really need to mention that because that's a play that may or may not actually have transpired very, very well here. Now, that said, I would have gone for, or I would have lost him actually with that in mind, the more I think about it. Then, of course, alone in Sand Slash getting that hidden power ground onto it and getting a massive amount of damage onto it yeah it does kind of kill its viability here it could have very well after one sd actually wrap up the game in the hail because well let's face it riperior barely took of course a plus two hit there glisker would not have been able to take of course any kind of avalanche or what they call ice crash kubelian would have died in earthquake uh, though, as stated, I am Scarfed and I would have been able to outspeed it anyway, but Tabakoku and, of course, Muck would not be able to take an EQ. So, the viability for Alola and Sandslide is actually really high in this kind of matchup, and I will even go so far and say this. I think Alola and Sandslide is so underrated because it is maybe not so good in the tiers, but in leagues, it showcases stabs are incredible, and it was definitely showcased here that it could very well have actually won the game by itself, and that's really, really showcased here. Uh, other than that, um, I do believe um, 
I do some good plays here back and forth, but I was defensively trying to check Bogat here, and it, while it did work, it was very clear that he had optimized for actually dealing with it rather nicely. Mianza Swampert, they really, really threw me off, and they, there's a reason they survived so long in the game. They are just so tough for me of actually dealing with. It was very clear I would not be able to soak those Pokemon whatsoever. So, with that said, thank you, Bogat, for the game. I really appreciate it, and um, we're now 3-1 in the VPL. So, things are looking good. Definitely looking better than I did in TBU. I have a better team too, right? <laughs> so anyway, guys, of course, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.